Buffalo Bills need to add another offensive lineman in the draft? And with the addition of new offensive line coach Aaron Cromer, does this mean we'll see less of Air Allen in transition to a more balanced offensive attack in 22? Well, all this and so much more in episode 7 of Rated Rev, right here on the Buffalo Fanatics Network. To all of Bill's Mafia and the Buffalo Fanatics around the world, you already know what to do. But in case you're not connected to the Buffalo Fanatics Network, do me this favor. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel with bell notifications on so you can stay up to date with all things Buffalo Bills. Now let's dig in. Grace and peace to you, my brothers and sisters. In case you don't know me by now, I am The Rev, and you are tuned in to another episode of Rated Rev, brought to you by the Buffalo Fanatics Network. I pray you guys had a blessed Easter and Resurrection Sunday with your family and your loved ones, but I am excited, as always, to talk about the Buffalo Bills, and especially this episode as we dive into the offensive line just ahead of the NFL draft, which is a little under two weeks. So let's hit the ground running, shall we? Now, last year, the Buffalo Bills ended the season with the following starting offensive linemen. At left tackle, Deion Dawkins. At left guard, Ryan Bates. At center, Mitch Morris. Right guard, Daryl Williams, followed by the rookie at right tackle, Spencer Brown. Now, we all know that Ike Bucker sustained a season-ending Achilles injury that paved the way for Ryan Bates to assume the starting left guard spot. And the Buffalo Bills had former starting offensive guard John Feliciano, along with former third-round pick offensive guard Cody Ford, and rookie swing tackle Tommy Doyle as depth pieces along the offensive line. But at the conclusion of the season, Sean McDermott had to make some serious changes to the offensive coaching staff with Brian Dable off to coach the New York Giants. And he started by promoting Ken Dorsey to be the new offensive coordinator for the Buffalo Bills. But he didn't stop there. No, he didn't stop there at all. He hired former Panthers offensive coordinator Joe Brady to be his new quarterback's coach. But however, and this is what I want to pay attention to, one of the most important hires that McDermott made to his offensive staff this offseason was in bringing back Aaron Cromer to be his offensive line coach. A position, if you remember, that he once held before with the Buffalo Bills in 2015 and 2016 under, if I'm not mistaken, head coach Rex Ryan. So now, what makes that hire so important? Of all the hires that Sean McDermott made this offseason, one would think that it would be Ken Dorsey. But what makes Aaron Cromer so important? Well, if you remember... Sean McDermott told us in his combine presser that Aaron Cromer is known for doing something very special, and that is developing O-line talent. Now, he also said, in a, along with uh, uh, general manager Brandon Bean, that their priority this year and beyond is to protect Josh Allen, their $200 million investment and asset. And the additions to the offensive staff gave them the opportunity to watch this reset and rebrand themselves. So what does all this mean? Well, let's take a closer look into Aaron Cromer. Now, most recently, he was the Rams running game slash offensive, uh, I'm not offensive coordinator, running game coordinator slash offensive line coach from 2017 to 2019. In 2017, the Rams ranked eighth in rushing with fifth in rushing touchdowns. 
Eighth in rushing yards, fifth in rushing touchdowns. The following year, in 2018, they ranked third in the league in rushing yards and second in rushing touchdowns. But then in 2019, his final year with the Rams, they took a serious nosedive to 26th in rushing, but managed still to be ranked fourth in rushing touchdowns. Follow me, I'm going somewhere, Mafia. Follow me, I'm going somewhere. Now, during Cromer's first stint with the Buffalo Bills, let's keep on going back here. In 2015, the Bills were number one in rushing yards per game with 152 yards per game. Number one in total rushing yards with 2,432 yards for the season. And number one in rushing touchdowns with 19 rushing touchdowns on the season. But I'm not done. In 2016, Aaron Cromer followed up by leading the NFL in rushing yet again, this time with 164 rushing yards per game. They ranked number one in rushing yards per game with 164. They ranked number one in total rushing yards with an increase to 2,600 yards for the season. And they were number one in rushing touchdowns with the whopping 29 rushing touchdowns. Mafia fanatics, do you see the pattern here? From 2015 to 2018, Aaron Cromer's offensive lines have paved the way to top 10 rushing attacks with 2019 being the aberration. Now, in addition to having top rushing attacks under his tutelage, Aaron Cromer also has had the privilege, listen at this mafia, also had the privilege of having not one, but two top running backs and Todd Gurley with the Rams, and yours truly, LaShawn Shady McCoy with the Buffalo Bills running behind his league-leading offensive lineman. So this tells me, Mafia, fanatics, this tells me something very, very important that we need to know about Aaron Cromer and the Buffalo Bills moving forward. This tells me that Cromer's specialty is in developing offensive line units that create league-leading rushing attacks. But Rev, this is a passing league. Follow me. I'm taking you somewhere. All right. So what can we expect to see in 2022 and beyond? Now, you're asking your boy Rev, let me tell you what I expect to see. Not just my, my, my opinion, but this is based upon some patterns here that I'm outlining. I fully expect to see a far more potent rushing attack this year and going forward. You see, now I know this to be true because the Bills let Darrell Williams and John Feliciano walk. And they wasted absolutely no time whatsoever in making Pro Bowl left guard Roger Saffold a priority free agent signing who, number one, was coached by new O-line coach Aaron Cromer, and number two, is known to be a mauler, a beast, a dog in the run game. Now, the Bills under BBB, Big Baller Bean, was able to re-sign Ryan Bates and Ike Bakker extended Mitch Morris and added center slash guard Greg Mance, who was a seven-year vet who had 58 games under his belt. Listen to all this. So that leads me to the presumed starting offensive line right now as we speak heading into the 22 season. At left tackle, Deion Dawkins. Left guard now, Roger Saffold. At center, Mitch Morse, right guard, Ryan Bates. You know, he's a jack of all trades. He can move all across the offensive line. And then at right tackle, 
the second year man, my dog, Spencer Brown. Now for depth, the Bills have offensive guard Cody Ford, swing tackle Tommy Doyle, and the newly signed, newly added center slash guard and Greg Matz. So here's my question to you, Mafia fanatics. Here's my question. Is that enough? When we talk about the offensive line as it is currently constructed right now from the presumed starting five to the depth position players, is that enough? Let me know how you feel about it in the comment section. Is it enough? Well, at first glance, I feel pretty confident in the presumed starting five offensive linemen. But I still believe that the Buffalo Bills should look to add another offensive lineman at some point in the draft, whether it be early, middle rounds, or late. They should add somebody at some point in the draft. Because think about this. Roger Saffold at 34 only signed a one-year deal, which would presumably leave another hole at left guard in 2023. Now, Cody Ford also will be a free agent at the end of the season, so we can't assume that he's just going to turn it around this year and be with us for the foreseeable future. Even though I believe that Aaron Cromer is going to do everything he can to try to develop Cody Ford this year, we can't assume that he's going to step into that left guard position, that left guard vacancy that will be, you know, left open by Roger Saffold at the end of this year. So I think that the Buffalo Bills, led by Brandon Bean, who, oh, by the way, is the best general manager in the NFL, bar none, will ultimately draft a developmental offensive lineman, watch this, to be an Aaron Cromer disciple that will hopefully be ready to assume the starting role in 2023. Now, as Aaron Cromer's disciple, this means that this offensive lineman will be an athletic mauler likely in the mode of Roger Saffold and even Richie Incognito for those of you who probably don't know, or maybe you do know and remember Richie Incognito, Pro Bowl guard for the Buffalo Bills under Aaron Cromer in 2015 and 2016. So now if you look at the Aaron Cromer archetype, Roger Saffold is six foot five, 325 pounds, and Incognito was 6'3", 320 pounds. If you keep on looking at their measurables, Roger Saffold ran a, what, I think like a 5'2", 140. He had just under 34-inch inch arms. He ran a 1.80, excuse me, 10-yard split and put up 27 reps in the bench. Do you see that, do you see that profile there? Incognito at 6'3", 320, Ran a 49240, just under 33 inch arms, ran a 1.75 10 yard split, and put up 29 on the bench. So, we have an idea of kind of the archetype that Aaron Cromer is looking for. You say, wait, Aaron Cromer is not the general manager. Yes, of course, he is not the general manager, but you cannot think for one second that he will not have a huge voice and a lot of influence in who the Buffalo Bills decide to add to this offensive line. He already showed it by bringing in Roger Saffold. Had they not have had Aaron Cromer on the staff, Roger Saffold likely would not be a Buffalo Bill to this day. Do you see the influence he's had so, so far already on this staff and on who they bring so don't think that he won't have any impact on who they may choose to add in the draft at offensive line so now with that being said and the archetype kind of in mind let's take a look at some 2022 offensive line prospects that might fit 
that mold or that archetype that Aaron Cromer is looking for. Number one, we have Zion Johnson from Boston College, offensive guard. He is 6'3", 316 pounds, 34-inch arms, ran a 5.1840 and put up 32 reps on the bench press. Now, Zion Johnson is powerful. He's versatile. He can run that gap and even a zone scheme. And he even was used as a pulling guard at Boston College. Okay? So he so his size somewhat fits the archetype, but he's powerful, he's a mauler, and he's athletic. Keep that in mind. Number two, Darian Kennard from Kentucky. Darian Kennard from the University of Kentucky, offensive guard. Uh, well, actually, he's an offensive tackle. He stands at six foot five, three hundred twenty-four pounds. He has thirty-five inch arms. Ran a five-three-one forty. Okay, put up twenty reps on the bench. But when you look at his scouting report. And you watch him on tape, Kennard is powerful, he's athletic, he has a nasty demeanor to him, and he's had 39 starts at offensive tackle with potential guard flex, okay? This guy is very athletic for tackle, but he also has the ability to be moved inside to guard, but he has tons of experience. So we'll see if Darren Kennard is on their radar as well to make a transition inside to guard. And lastly, Kenyon Green. Kenyon Green, offensive guard from Texas A&M. 6'4", 325 pounds, 34-inch arms, ran a 5'2", 40, 20 in the bench. He's a mauler. He's a power gap uh, 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 player, according to PFN. But this guy is one of the top-ranked offensive guard prospects coming out in the NFL draft right now. So there are my three offensive line targets in the 2022 NFL draft who I personally think could develop under new offensive line coach Aaron Cromer, Kenyon Green, Zion Johnson, and Darian Kennard. If I were to have my guess, if I were to take a guess, I would... I would guess and lean towards Zion Johnson. If he's there at 25 or anywhere close, we may see Brandon Bean electing to move up. But if he's there at 25, I think it would be very difficult for Brandon Bean to pass up on him because this guy fits the mold. Yeah, he's not 325 pounds, but he's still heavy enough. But the rest of his measurables fit and he's powerful and extremely versatile with experience as a zone player pulling guard, which is what the Buffalo Bills are going to be running this year under O-line coach Aaron Cromer. Now, in addition to all of this, we can't fail to talk about the fact that the Bills brass has also been very diligent in meeting with the top running back prospects as well. You see, you remember I said that Aaron Cromer, not only did he have a league-leading offensive line and rushing attack, but he also had the privilege of having two top running backs in Todd Gurley and Shady McCoy. Now, see what happened? He added Roger Saffold And now the Bills of Brass are looking at the top running back prospects in the NFL draft. And not just looking at them, they've met with them. And Brees Hall, Kenneth Walker, and Isaiah Spiller, all three of them have met with the Buffalo Bills. And these guys, according to certain mock drafts and and, and, and all this other kind of stuff, these guys are ranked probably... Uh, slotted within rounds one and two. No later than round two. So, 
Could this mean that the Buffalo Bills will look to rely less on Josh Allen to do it all and lean more on the running game in an effort to bring more balance to the offense? Well, with the addition of Aaron Cromer, Roger Saffold, and oh, by the way, O.J. Howard at tight end to bring in this 12 personnel formations and pre-draft meetings with the top running back prospects, as I mentioned, slated to go in rounds one through two, I would say, Rev would say, that the answer is... <laughs> 